Hello there Pisces, welcome to your tarot reading. I hope the video finds you well, I hope you're still watching and I hope the messages resonate with you. Um, I feel like the past few months have been very trying for many of you. There's a lot to do, there are a lot of people depending on you. Um, I just feel like, you know, the, the lattice on a pie, okay? Like it's, um, it's layer, it's woven in, everything is interconnected. And it's really hard to extract one thing from another. That's what it feels like to me. And um, I feel like, you know, you, you, you might have had a lot of uh, things, like a lot of situations you're trying to find answers to. Uh, you're trying to find resolutions for, you're trying to figure out the best course of action. Um, and I feel that energy might have, uh, you know, surfaced during the month of November because November was that Mercury retrograde period. And I feel like it brought about a lot of uncertainty, especially for water signs, um, where they felt like this sense of urgency to have to act, to have to take action, to have to do things, but with, with like full, without full information. So... I, I do feel like, you know, that energy is bleeding into the month of December. And so I hope this video provides some clarity for you, okay? Because I feel like the energy is a little bit stuck and a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so the, the first image that I saw was that pie, okay? It's, um, it's some type of a fruit pie, so it, it's like some type of berries. It could be cherries, it could be strawberries, something red, like um, even like, you know, um, cherries, something red. So even a rhubarb pie. And it's really beautiful. It, it smells really good. There's steam coming out of it. It just came out of the oven, and there's that the lattice, okay? And everything is done meticulously well. Like if it's a lattice, like hand-woven pie, it was done really, really well. And so I feel like there is a situation here where something really, really good can come out of it. It's presented in a way where it's like packaged perfectly. But I, I do sense that it's also a situation where it might come with strings attached. It might come with conditions because you know, the lattice, the interwovenness, the, the interrelated, you know, topping on top of that pie. It indicates to me a situation where it could be a little bit difficult to extract yourself from. There are a lot of factors that you have to take into account in order to make something presentable, in order to bring something to fruition, in order to enjoy something. So that's what I'm, see, uh, I'm sensing, okay? So that's the first image. And I feel like this first image um, is somebody that you're dealing with, okay? Um, I feel like you and this person, so for some of you, it's a family member. For others of you, it's a person like, an, um, a, a, like a relationship partner. You might be separated from this person. You're trying to finalize a divorce. You're trying to get out of Dodge. You're trying to get out of their life. But for whatever reason, they might not. Um, they they might not want to give you full custody of the children. They might want the house. They might not sign the divorce papers. So it's like there's some lingering attachment, and you're trying to find a way to give them like a peace offering. Or you're, everyone is like wanting a piece of the pie. And so it's really difficult for you to come up with, you know, how to slice it, how to divide it, how to give it to somebody, how much to give to somebody so that they get what they want, but you also get a piece of the pie. You also get what you want. Okay, so I feel like there's a, a common pool here of resources, possibly money, financial assets. And I feel that you're trying to figure out how to divvy it up. You're trying to also think about what's, what is the best offer that you can get or somebody can get. What is an acceptable offer? What is a good middle ground? What is a good compromise? And the lattices are all the extraneous things and all the things that you have to factor into this decision-making process. So I see a lot of like dividing up assets. Um, I see a lot of like wanting to hash out the terms of a contract so that both parties can agree on certain things. 
And then I also feel as if for for those of you with children, grandchildren even, um, or if you don't have your own children, you might do a lot of like, you know, uh, financial planning, um, thinking about like your power of attorney, thinking about how much you want to live to leave to this child, that child, this grandkid, that grandkid, this niece, this nephew. And so you're factoring in all the, the, the stuff. So for example, this child, you, is your favorite and is the most responsible and is the most hardworking, you're like, they deserve more. But then this child over here is a little bit more irresponsible, has more children, is less financially stable. So you feel that, you know, on the one hand, I wanna give this child everything, but on the other hand, this child needs more of my time and my resources. So I feel like you're trying to grapple with these decisions where you want it to be equitable, you want it to be fair, but at the same time, you want to give it to people who are deserving of it, okay? So I feel like you're grappling with some major financial decisions. You're grappling between, I, I also feel like the sense of like loyalty, you know, where your emotions are swaying you and where your loyalties lie, okay? So that, that's, um, that's the, the, the message I got with this pie. The other message is quite interesting because um, it, it keeps zooming out. It's almost like a slinky. There's one layer and then it, it, it like expands and then you know there's another ring and then it expands and there's another ring. So let me just describe what I saw. Um, maybe it will, it will make more sense, okay? Um, I see this house. It's a little cottage, like a little cabin probably two bedroom cabin where people go um, to stay, you know, for a few nights and they go hunting, they go um, bobsledding, whatever it is. Um, it's in the, it's in the North Pole. So it's, um, it's snow covered. There's a, a lot of pine trees covered in snow. The ground is completely covered in snow and the snow is not falling. So the, the cottage is just covered in snow. And then I feel like I'm not hearing any noise, okay? So this is like in the dead of winter, there's a lot of snow. And all of a sudden I hear like buzzing, like a very distinct buzzing, electricity buzzing noise. And then it kind of zooms into the sky and you see like the Northern Lights, okay? You see like the, 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 the waves of color coming in and as the colors come in, the magentas and the blues and the greens and the purples, um, it's almost like an orchestra. The, 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 the chiming, the buzzing, the ambient noise that comes in with this wave of colors, it's really beautiful. It's very calm. And when I saw this, I was thinking like, you know, the universe is uh, trying to give you messages. They hear that you're in a space where you need some guidance. They also hear that you're in a space where you're taking on a lot of responsibilities and you feel a little bit overwhelmed and they're really encouraging you, you know, sequester yourself in this cabin, drown out the noise, drown out the people, um, focus on yourself, listen to that inner voice and listen to the, to the spirit trying to talk to you because you're looking for answers and they're here to give you answers. So keep in mind the image that I saw in all of the images, the pie and then also this cabin in the Arctic, there's no noise. The only noise is this, uh, like, the, the orchestra, okay? The, the orchestra noise, the twinkling, and, and, and then the, the buzzing, and the, it sounds like wind chimes almost, where there's a message that is trying to come through to you, but you're very busy, you have a lot on your plate, you are possibly a little bit stressed out, so you're, you're not able to hear the twinkling, the nuances, and, and the subtleties that are coming through in, in the picture for you. And so from that image, it zooms out, and there's another image. And I see like a watery scene. 
And it's like a, a, a pond, a very shallow pond or a very shallow lake or like a stream. And there are two koi fish, okay?、Uh, one is like red and white, the other one has black and orange,、um, like black dots. It's predominantly orange and it's black. And they're swimming in circles. And you know the, the, the symbol for you guys, the Piscean symbol, is the two fish swimming in opposite directions in a circle. In this image, I'm seeing that they're just swimming in circles. Like,、um, there might be a situation where you're emotionally, the, the water that I'm seeing, it's a shallow body of water. And just the koi fish, beautiful, vibrant colored koi fish swimming in, circle, in circles. Um, I feel like you know, the, it, it denotes like a situation where you're emotionally very invested in a person or a situation. And because you're so emotionally invested, you're not able to make a decision. So you're proverbially like just going in circles, going round and round and round, not being able to reach a resolution. For some of you, this could be a relationship. Parent child relationship where you're not able to cut the umbilical cord. Okay, so forgive me for being、uh, frank.、Um, I feel that you've always helped this person, subsidized their life, provided financial resources, and they might be draining to you emotionally, financially, physically. You give a lot of yourself. You guys are really. Generous, loving people, and especially if you're emotionally invested in a person and you care about them, it's really hard for you to kind of like extract yourself. And so you're emotionally invested, you're, you don't see a way out, you're swimming in circles. And then I also feel for you, this might be a relationship that you're in.、Um, the other person really loves you. They're It's kind of like codependent, you know,、um, but I feel like they need you a lot more than you need them. So, like I said, the water is shallow. And what that means is, I feel that you don't need them as much as they need you. And you're wanting to leave the relationship, but you don't know how because it stings your heart to have to break up with them. It stings your heart to have to hurt this person. And it stings your heart because you're not happy in the relationship and you want to find a way out. Okay? And then it zooms out again. And the last image that I saw was、um, another snowy scene.、Um, there's like、uh, some type of a tree, it's some type of a fir, like a pine tree. And I,、um, I'm seeing kind of like the, the bottom of the tree trunk near the ground. And then I see this white bunny, really fluffy white bunny,、uh, prancing around in the snow. And、uh, he kind of looks around. I don't know if it's a he or a she.、Um, he looks around and then he、uh, crawls kind of like near the, the trunk, the, the bottom of the trunk of the tree. Burrows himself in, and then you see like little baby bunnies like,、um, that he's coming home to. Okay, bringing something to the, the little ones that are like hiding inside the tree for warmth, for shelter, for protection. And the, 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 big, bunny, the, the big rabbit is bringing home some food, some nourishment, or just you know, being there to protect the babies. Okay, and so. When the image are just kind of like layered and layered upon one another in this way, so in total you have four images, and this is the most amount of images that I've seen for a sign. And you're like the 11th video that I've done, so it seems to me like there is a situation where there's a lot of factors coloring your judgment, coloring your decision making process. There's the element of like,、um, Um, it's like a, a mixture of love and loyalty. Okay, so like you, you love one person, you're loyal to another, and you care about both. There's also the element of like 
familial protection, wanting to take care of what's yours, wanting to take care of your babies, wanting to take care of your kids. But at the same time, they need to be able to fend for themselves. So you're grappling with this decision. Do I cut the umbilical cord? And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Do I let them, you know, out into the world so that they can fend for themselves, so that they can learn, so that they can become stronger, more sensible people? Or do I try to protect them as much as I can? You know, so it, it's like, the, I, it really str I, I feel really strongly there's this, you know, paternal, it's kind of like a, an override mode, okay, where you're emotionally invested in a situation and you become very protective of it. You care for it, you want to take over. And it's telling you not to override, you know, to, to not resort to that because we have to learn a little bit of like loving detachment, okay? So there's a situation here. There are a lot of decisions that you're making for the month of December. It seems like everywhere you turn, there's a decision, you know? Uh, you're hyper vigilant, like that bunny. You're looking around, scanning the horizon for probably pet predators that could uh, hurt you, that could hurt the people that you love. Um, I also feel like, you know, everything is just really complicated, okay? And so, let's move away from the images and let's talk about the cards a little bit. I mentioned before, there's a person that you're trying to walk away from and I feel like whether or not they are aware of it, I, I feel like they're, um, they're, they're trying every trick in the book to get you to stay, whether or not they're aware of it. They could do it like unintentionally where you're just like, okay, I'm going to go and then they, they get really sick and then they call you and they say they need you and they, and then you feel bad and then you want to take care of this person. So I feel like there's a lot more pity than love in this type of a relationship. Um, what I have here is the Nine of Pentacles. This is independence, self-sufficiency, being single, being untethered and free from other people, standing your ground, being in a position where you have a lot of financial abundance and a lot of just, um, you're able to take care of yourself. And the only thing that's standing between you and being completely emotionally uh, free and, and, you know, untethered is a relationship that might be a little bit toxic. We have the devil here, codependence, somebody who's like reeling you in, somebody who wants to have you to themselves, who don't want you to, you know, uh, leave them. You might be dealing with a relationship partner who is quite possess possessive or a little bit jealous and uh, when they see you you know if, if you want to have like a girl's night or a guy's night they might like um, they, they might they might not like it and they might make like you know snark or snide comments to belittle you or, or to like prevent you from, from from having fun on your own without them so just be careful about that energy, especially for those of you. I mean, you know, this energy affects people of all ages. We need to be cognizant of that. But at the same time, I feel like some of you might be a little bit on the younger age bracket watching this. Um, guilt tripping is not love. It is manipulation, emotional manipulation. Okay. And so just make sure you set your boundaries. This is all about setting your boundaries being cognizant of the unhealthy behavior the other person exhi is exhibiting and not turning a blind eye to it, okay? So this is an ostrich. He's um, hiding his head under the sand. It's like denial, putting up with a situation, um, unwilling to acknowledge a situation, unwilling to admit that there's a problem, unwilling to, to see it for what it is, okay? So denial. And so I feel like there's a situation here. It is, a, it is toxic. It is not love. 
it doesn't mean the other person is bad because I feel like, you know, they, they, they might like subconsciously do these things subconsciously sabotage you every time you want to go out and they're like oh no I, I i need you to help to drive me to this place you know or something's wrong with my car can you help me and you have to turn down your your girlfriends or your boyfriends in order to be with this person to help them with whatever you know situations going on in their life put yourself first and be wary of this situation because i feel like you are flattered that this person, you know, really needs you because um, I feel like a lot of Piscean people, you you want to take care of other people. You um, you are very giving and very loving of other people, and you give a lot of yourself to people you care about. Like you overextend and you overgive, and I do sense it is time for you to pull back and take care of yourself. Okay, put yourself in that cabin in the North Pole. Take care of yourself. Drown out the noise and the problems from other people. They're more than capable of taking care of themselves. So that you can reserve that space of solitude and quiet so that you can listen to advice from the universe with whatever it is that you need to make decisions on. Because I feel like other people are coming in distracting you from the decisions that you need to make for yourself. Not for them, for yourself. So there's a lot of, um, there's a situation here where I feel like you're extending, you know, like that slinky, just like coiling, coiling, extending, stretching and extending. You might be stretched very thin, helping other people, and you're feeling it physically and emotionally that you're not able to continue doing this. You mentally, you understand that and you might understand what I'm saying. But physically and emotionally, you're not ready to take the advice. So put yourself first. Cut those cords with other people. You need to take care of yourself this month, okay? And we really can't be in denial about situations, especially if someone is draining us and, and sapping us dry. We need to be aware of that. And we need to be aware of why they do these things and why it's unhealthy so that once we arrive at the conclusion that you know this is unhealthy because it's it's stunting their growth it's enabling it's stunting their growth and they need to be self-sufficient we have to understand that in order for us to kind of like you know cut those ties or to invest less of our songs and wait for them to step up or even letting them take care of their own problems, okay? I feel like there is a female figure here in this spread who is really reaching out to you for help. And I feel like, you know, um, we can only, you know, that, that saying, um, we can only do so much, the other person has to want to help themselves, right? I feel like this person is very confused, blindfolded okay blindfolded um it's like a centaur the woman is like a centaur she's got a body of a horse she is fallen down she has fallen she's injured physically emotionally she is in a state where she's very vulnerable but the, the fact that she's blindfolded indicates to me that it's a series of life decision that has brought her to this point there's somebody around you who's leaning on you heavily because she's going through some rough time for some of you. This could be a sister, a best friend. I feel very strong female energy, a mother, a daughter, really strong female energy who is leaning on your strength. And I do sense that the, the devil energy is so strong that they need to come out of this situation on their own this is a very, normally a really strong woman, a centaur, possibly a Sagittarius, possibly a Capricorn, something with horns, okay? Um, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aries, Taurus even. And um, I'm also seeing as well, you know, like, um, they're leaning on your strength, but they're also very draining and very difficult to be around. 
they're going through a period of uh, in their life where they're not really sure what to do and you can only do so much they need to you know willingly take off the take off the blindfolds and look at the gravity of their situation so i feel like it's a series of life choices that have um brought them to this point and they are in a position now where they can you know they have the 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 hindsight to remove the blindfold and to look at where they're going and so you your advice your input your guidance will not help the situation unfortunately because this is a person that needs to do it on their own okay so i hope that you're able to understand like not only mentally but emotionally to understand to let go and then i also feel for many of you um you're wanting to leave somebody and they won't leave you alone you're wanting to divorce somebody separate from somebody break up with somebody and they won't leave you alone and then i also feel like for some of you you might be unknowingly involved unknowingly or knowingly involved with somebody who might have had like um another relationship that you were not aware of and i feel that you might have been um made aware you know in the month of november and so you're trying to check yourself out of this situation and there's still a lot of communication between you and this person we have here the three of pentacles busy bees okay building a situation and there are three three people involved building a nest building a family but there are three people involved and then we have as well the three of cups three people involved in the situation swimming in circles okay so i i feel like you might have been wrapped up and then caught up in this tide against your wishes and now that we're in the spin cycle we have to wait for everything to come out in the wash we have to wait for the timer to ding before we can take the clothes out because the doors are locked right when you're in that spin cycle when there's still water inside that washer so i feel like there's a situation here where there's an end in sight there is as well um a resolution but it's it's very dependent upon like timing so it's like you're you're thinking you know next week next month next year like there's an end in sight you're waiting for that end date and in the meantime you don't really have a choice but to be in this state of suspension uh this state of inactivity the hangman so i definitely feel here some of you you might be wanting to get away from one person to start a relationship with someone new but this person will not let you go and then you might unknowingly or knowingly get yourself into a situation where somebody is in a relationship and they're telling you i'm going to get a, a separate i'm going to get a divorce uh give me a week give me a month give me a year whatever it is and you're waiting for things to just finish up and so i feel like the love life area sector it's sort of like that going in circles um there's an end date you're waiting for that end date you're waiting for more information you're waiting for finality you're waiting on decisions and in the meantime all the other areas of your life seem to be really going well we have here the self-employed person the business person so many of you financially you're in a really good uh space you're self-sufficient you're financially stable you're able to take care of yourself you don't need another person it's when you get involved with other people that's when they bring drama and chaos and you're also like the anchor of stability you have been for quite some time and that's why all of these characters who are dealing with a lot of upheaval they're coming to you presenting you know their problems on a silver platter and they're like fix me help me and so don't let this energy spin you in circle and knock you off your center because i feel like this is not something that we need to get involved in um i just finished the libran reading and i told them you know pick their battles 
I feel like for you guys, it's not so much about picking your battles. It's it's really thinking about who are you fighting for, and why you're fighting for this person. Who are you advocating for, and why? You want to protect the people that you love, but in the process of fighting for them, you're stepping up. Does that mean that they're able to step down, or are they fighting alongside you? Right. So we need to advocate for people who are willing to do the work as well. We can't be single-handedly fighting somebody else's battle because that's not our karmic destiny. And interfering with somebody else's karma, I've seen this play out a lot. Okay, with、uh, private like readings that I've done for clients in in life in general, and also with the people that I I've dealt with.、Um, Where they fight other people's battles, they get embroiled in situations that they have no business being in.、Um, they, it's it's sort of like somebody is you know their karmic destiny is like that, right? It's linear, and out of nowhere you're intercepting and you're cutting off that karmic path for that person, and so source energy always returns to its source. And so, rather than learning this the fastest way and possibly the easiest way, you're intercepting. And so, the source has to divert and create a different path, which is longer, which is possibly harder for that person. Does that make sense? So, I feel like if it is not your karmic destiny, if it is not your karma, don't get involved in it. No matter how much you love. No matter how much you are, cap- you feel like you're capable of doing this, of helping, of、um, of fighting this good fight. It is not your place. So practice loving detachment. And then I also feel like this is an ongoing issue for many of you guys, for the past three months, for the past three years. And I feel as if. You're you're tired. You're battle weary. You want to rest. You want it to stop. And you feel like oh we're like you know at the last leg of the journey. I can't leave this situation alone. I can't leave this person alone. We're almost there. There's the、uh, end in sight. You know we're in the the rinse cycle or the wash cycle. It's it's going to be done very very soon. I can't give up now. And it's like maybe the lesson is for this person to, to you know, walk that last leg of the journey on their own, and for you to, you've gotten them there. Maybe you need to relinquish your energy and relinquish control, so that they can walk that last phase on their own, so that you can draw back your energy, take care of yourself, because I feel that you need to take care of yourself. Okay. Um. I'm seeing as well.、Um, some of you have been very, very active.、Um, I do feel pains in the lower extremity, like ankles, feet,、um, walking around a lot, kind of like pushing yourself physically past your limits, being very busy, having to go to many places, running errands here, picking up this there,、um, going to like multiple stores, multiple locations, wearing yourself really thin, and Feeling exhausted, and while all of this is happening, while you're doing this, you're you're operating on adrenaline, and then at the end of the day, you get home, you're about to go to sleep, and your body is just like exhausted, and you you know within like a second, you're knocked out in bed. Okay, so that is a sign that you just need to you know prioritize your health, take care of yourself, get enough rest, and conserve that energy for yourself. Um, I feel I, like I can't say this enough.、Um, just please take care of yourself. All right, the holiday seasons are coming up, and you don't want to be under the weather for that. Okay, it's a time for us to spend with people we love, with friends and family, children, grandkids,、um, meet new people that might be included in our family. It's an important time. 
And so you don't want to wear yourself out. You, you want to take better care of yourself, okay, Pisces? I'm a little bit concerned. Just, um... So, I'll leave it at that. Um, the last three cards that I want to talk about here... I feel like this is when I was seeing uh, the koi fish. So one of them is black, and, uh, I'm sorry, one of them, yeah, black and orange. So like it's predominantly orange with black spots. And then the other one is white with red, with, it's red with white spots. And it's swimming in a circular formation. So round and round and round we go. Um, I feel that there is a lot of love between you and another person. What we have here is the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups. And, oh, I'm noticing this too. There's a fish in that circle, in that ring, okay? And the koi fish always indicates to me a lot of financial prosperity, okay? And this is a situation where I'm seeing as well, you know, you're trying to create a legacy. You're trying to leave. I'm hearing for some of you, the will and testament. If I leave this world, who do I leave my riches, my glory, my legacy, my resources to? And this is what I was uh, talking about earlier, where you have people that you love and you, you feel like they deserve it because, you know, they've been amazing people. They're responsible and you know that the money that you leave them or whatever you, you, you decide to leave them with, they'll make great use out of it. And there are other people that you might not love as much, but they need the resources a lot more and you're, you're hesitant because they're not very responsible. So whatever you leave them with, you don't think that they're going to be able to make the most out of it. So in a, in a way, it is wasteful, but also in another way, they need it more. And so you're grappling with this ethical dilemma. I work so hard for this and I want to give it to people who I love, who deserves it. But then there's also this person who needs it. So I would say this situation is all about you deciding so it, it's something that you've worked really hard for okay whether it be a house that you you know you you paid off with your hard work and years of just you know making on time payments you finally paid off the house give it to somebody that you feel the house would benefit somebody with children someone with a family okay um, if it's money in the bank and you're just like I worked so hard you know the past uh, 50 years of my life and I want this to go somewhere, then give it to the person that you feel would make the most out of that money. So that could mean wise investment, that could mean, you know, uh, being able to take care of their family, whatever that means. I feel that your heart is divided. And when it, it comes to who we love and how we love, we want to give our all. Where I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm rambling. Where I'm going with this is there isn't really a right or a wrong. It's our emotional attachments to a, an outcome in a decision that might make it seem like a right or a wrong. When it comes to giving, when it comes to intentions, if it's done with good intentions, there is never a right or a wrong. And so I feel like you're making this situation a lot more complicated because your emotions are muddled. You might feel like this one person really need the, the money because they don't have a lot, but you might have resentment towards them and you don't want to give them everything. Let go of that resentment. And then the decision will be very, I want to say, once you're able to let go of that resentment, the decision is going to be a lot easier to make. So I feel like there, there might be, you know, um, this element about strings attached. Wanting to give this person something with conditions attached. 
you know, you in order to get this, you have to do exactly this. And that could actually be a good incentive in order to get the other person to be more responsible. That might work. And then on the other hand, if you love somebody, you know, give them whatever it is because like a gift with good intentions, there is no wrong that can come out of it. Okay, so that's what I feel. I, I'm just sensing that you're 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 torn between big decisions, and a lot of it is finance related. And the thing that is really you know going unaddressed here is that resentment that you do feel towards a person. It's love hate, okay? And and you know, it's not it's not really love unless there's a little bit of resentment, unless there's a little bit of. Um, bickering and hatred associated with it okay so i feel like there's like tension there's like tug of war and and push and pull and you're trying to figure out which direction to go in you're trying to find your center and i feel as well itemizing making a list of of all your assets and dividing things up little by little might be a lot easier to 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 manage to handle rather than looking at things as like you know big chunks of things are harder to divide up so if you can do that it might make the decision making process a lot easier for you and and it will run a lot smoothly so i hope that resonates and i hope that is helpful for some of you who are dealing with this um i feel like there's an elephant in the room here When I mentioned um, earlier that you're going around and around in circle with another person, I started to talk about your love relationship, but it pulls me back to the other areas over here. So it keeps pulling this way. So I'm going to try to separate the energies. Ace of Cups. We're going to try this again. So this is a love situation going around and around uh, with another person. And then I feel like there might be periods of time where you're talking and communicating. And you know, planning for the future together, and then there might be periods of time where the two of you are like in total silence. Okay, so I just feel like there something is very cyclical. I also feel like there might have been recently a stoppage or breakage in communication with the Four of Swords. This is a a break. This is a、um, taking a break, getting some distance. Withdrawing from a situation, mulling things over, needing time to rest and recuperate, feeling a little bit like inundated and overwhelmed by this love that you have for another person, feeling almost as if you love this person a lot, and there's a lot of things that has to happen before the two of you can finally, you know,、uh, celebrate your union together. There's a lot of like. Behind the scenes, things that needs to be done, and so you're starting to wonder whether or not this breakthrough is going to happen. You're starting to wonder whether or not you're doomed to kind of like go round and round in circles with this person. I also feel that there might be important conversations in this relationship that are not being addressed. Two of Swords. It's like、um, in the traditional Rider Waite deck. Uh, it's the woman with the two swords, like right in front of her. She's like crisscrossing the two swords. She's warning, like, "Don't approach me," okay? And it's also a situation where you're kind of like mulling things over at a standstill when it comes to a major、uh, decision-making process. And I feel like the energy is very similar here, having the information but choosing to ignore it. It's like ignorance is bliss. Okay, I'm gonna stick my head in the sand and not have to deal with this. There is a situation here where you just feel like I just want to be with that that person. I don't care about anything else、uh, that's around me, around them. I just want us to come together in a union and disregard everything else. So you might be dealing with someone who's already in another relationship, and the two of you just want to be together. But your significant others, their significant others, will not let them go, and so you're waiting, and you're also questioning whether or not this is worth the wait. 
some of you might be at a distance um, from the other person that you really care for and you're waiting for them to come back you're waiting for for the reunion and I also feel like it's a situation where the future is not really talked about so you're not really able to comprehend you know what is our future gonna look like what what label can we put on our relationship? Are we dating? Are we, are we still single? Are we exclusive? Are we, you know, going to get engaged soon? Are we going to get married? So I feel like there's just a lot of questions that you have here with this relate in, regarding this relationship, where it's headed, where it's going. Uh, a lot of planning, a lot of conversation need to be had between you and this other person. But for whatever reason, I'm sensing somebody is walking on eggshells. Somebody might, um, somebody might feel like a little bit of guilt. I have here the nine of swords, and the nine of swords usually indicates to me like worries and anxieties, things that are keeping us up at night. Um, having our imagination or our um, suspicions, imagination and suspicions run wild, and it's keeping us late at night, up very late at night. And so I feel that there is a relationship here something very significant to you you're wondering where it's headed you're wondering whether or not it's worth the wait and you're wondering whether or not it's going to go the distance and you're trying to figure out what to do and so my advice for you here is there's a lot of things happening it's like a lot of pockets of um, I don't want to say problems but I feel like pockets of pockets of decisions that need to be made in a lot of different sectors in your life concerning the people that you care about and you're dealing with possibly a lot of people in your life who are honestly not carrying their own weight not able to take care of themselves so don't make it your problem okay the ultimate advice for you is things you're making things very very complicated because you have to learn to compartmentalize, separate the different layers. Decisions need to be made one at a time. And in this instance, in this instance, it is really important for you to separate the emotion from the practical decisions. The house, the tangible thing, that little uh, cottage in the Arctic. You have to take care of that first. You have to make decisions on that first. Then look at your relationship with that koi fish in the shallow pond. The water is dwindling. That situation is um, it, it's just not going to continue going that way longer. So I feel that it's really important for you to separate out these decisions because they're honestly not related. And I feel that you might have difficulties doing that. And so the ultimate advice that I feel is coming through is to imagine yourself by yourself in that little cottage or that little cabin covered in snow, looking at the northern lights, looking at how marvelous, how beautiful it is, and how the universe is trying to communicate to you and give you advice but the universe is not able to do that because you're constantly surrounded by noise coming through from other people okay Pisces I have to leave it right there okay I feel that you're dealing with a lot and I feel that all you need right now is some quiet time for you to sleep for you to get you know hit that REM cycle to be able to dream and to be able to get messages that are trying to come through for you. So, you know, shut off the YouTube, shut off the TV, the smartphone, the computer. Do yourself a favor and just get enough sleep so that you can dream, so that you can problem solve in your sleep. Um, when I was young and I was in, I was in high school, and I was taking a calculus class and um, 
I had this one math problem that I could not solve. And I was trying to figure out why I could not solve it. And then I went to sleep. The last thing I thought about before I fell asleep was I thought about that math problem. And then I went to sleep and I dreamt about the math problem. I dreamt that I was on um, standing in front of a blackboard. I was writing out the exact same math problem on the blackboard. And there was this figure in white. It was like a really old man with like really long gray hair. He was wearing a white robe and he was walking me through how to solve that problem. And you know, at the time I wasn't into tarot reading, I wasn't into spirituality, but I always remember back to that moment. And um, I feel like that was a very transformative moment for me because it made me believe that if you want the answers, the answers will be given to you. And so I feel like you have a lot of questions you want answers to, you want to know what is the best course of action for you to take. And I would say quiet your mind, get some rest, think about what it is that you're trying to get answers to and the answers will come to you. You have a lot of spiritual energy coming through in order to help you deal with this in the month of December. You have the whole northern lights, okay? And that's really heavenly to me. Whenever I think about the Northern Lights, um, I think it is quite a, it's an amazing marvel to be able to look at it, to be able to hear it, to be able to experience that. And I feel that, you know, somebody from the other side or it could be your spirit guides are trying to reach you and they're really urging you to, you know, let them in. Drown out the noise and let them in, okay? Um, I wish you all the best. Please take care of yourself and um, I'll see you back next month, okay? Enjoy the rest of the holiday season with your loved ones, with your family, and I will talk to you guys soon. Make sure you get enough sleep. Take care.